the Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. It is so hard to believe that today is the fifth Sunday in Lent. The preparations that began five weeks ago when I was able to witness the, uh, the draping of the cross, that includes um, tennis balls. You really ought to see it. Maybe you should do this after church um, on, on some Sunday, but, but it, it is, it's quite, um, quite an endeavor. Um, we have celebrated evening worship together, um, evening prayer for these past four weeks, the fifth being um, this week. And now there are preparations that um, will, for what will unfold in the church during Holy Week, the, uh, the spring cleanup. The, uh, the choir has been diligently preparing music for that day. There is a, uh, the palms are, are ready, or just about ready to be used next week. Um, I'm sure, or wonder whether people still buy Easter finery to wear on, on Easter Sunday. So the choirs are, are rehearsing, people have their, uh, their uh, parts, if they are going to read um, something um, for Passion Sunday, there is Monday, Thursday, uh, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, and um, it all culminates by worship, the glorious worship, I understand, on Easter Sunday. Um, so after all these weeks, we are getting ready to celebrate, we do celebrate the resurrection every time we gather on a Sunday, but Easter Sunday is that most glorious of all for celebrating the resurrection. Now those of us who have been in the church for a while, um, clergy, lay, church professionals, um, have memories of these days piled high in our brains. Uh, there was that Easter for me when the flowers showed up on Saturday with every all the all in buds, and we turned the we put them all in one room and turned the heat up to 90 in hopes that um, well it wasn't 90 but we turned the heat way way up hoping that they would open the flowers would open by by um, by Sunday. Um, Good Fridays, I'm sure many of you remember that. Um, there are times that are so moving, more, more moving, um, for reasons that are hard to grasp. So we are nearing the season where memories are fresh and powerful and, and um, just, just sometimes a bit unbearable. So lost in our own exiles, those times when we find life to be difficult or unbearable. We tend to forget God's gifts and promises. In Isaiah, the author of our first lesson today, had precisely the same problem with his fellow Israelite Babylonian exiles. They remembered their past all too well. 
with with God. Um, they, when they passed through the waters of the Red Sea, God had been with them. And so now that they are in exile, these memories are buried under the rubble of Jerusalem and has been shoved aside by um, just some terrible things for, for their people. We, 21st century Christians, also run the same risks every Lent, Holy Week, and Easter. Our memories of when the church was full to the brim of worshipers, when things were different, threatened to swallow us. We too often yearn for those good old days now gone forever, devoured in the changing world when so much we had expected to endure hadn't endured. We, just like those 6th century BCE exiles, need to hear astonishing idea that Isaiah now puts forth to the exiles. Do not remember the former things, nor pay attention to the old things, he says. And that's really an incredible thing to say to people who have spent their lives remembering what God has done, what God has given, what their ancestors had done and said. We could say that all religion is based on memory. We say week after week as we celebrate Holy Communion, do this in memory of me when we eat the bread and drink the cup of the Lord. So how can we believe any prophet who demands that we forget those things that we have been always asked to remember? And the answer is that memories sometimes can get in the way of the new thing of God. And just look at what those old things are according to Isaiah. The former things he bids us to forget are more literally the first things. To dwell only on what God has done is possibly to cloud what God can and will do. And so he says, observe, I am doing a new thing. It sprouts now, don't you see it? I will create a road through the wilderness, a river in the desert. Our God is the God of the new thing. If we expect this God to always act in the ways we expect, based on our memories, based on what we have experienced before, we run the risk of missing what God is about now. Don't you see it, the new thing of God, please, Isaiah? And too often we must answer no. We are too busy doing things in the old way, the tried and true way, the familiar way, the way we know and trust. Our wildernesses have no roads. Our deserts are dry. We are like those who define madness. We do the same things again and again and expect different results. But the God of Isaiah plays a different tune. The God of Easter calls a different dance. But if we are to sing anew and dance anew, we must remember to forget. We must expect the new work of God. Be alert for the new thing of God. The promise for us this Lent and Easter is water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people. When I knew that this was going to be my last Sunday to stand in this pulpit, I just had given a, a quick glance at the lessons and I told my husband, I said, I know what I'm gonna preach on that day uh, about God doing new things. Well, then I failed to, I guess I, I just picked up on the, on the Old Testament lesson and failed to look at the gospel. Well, the gospel doesn't talk about, well, it does talk about a new thing in a way in that it talks about 
Mary's um, extravagant act with Jesus, which mirrors the extravagant love that God has for us all. That extravagant love, which was most pronounced in the new thing he did by sending his son to die for us and to rise from the dead for us. Within that larger umbrella of God doing new things in our life, a new thing by sending Jesus, a new thing by having us be baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus, a new thing of giving us the opportunity to start anew every single day. Within that context of God doing new things every day is the fact that Palm Lutheran Church is at a time when there is a new thing. Surely the God we worship is the God of resurrection and new life. But there is, you are about to start a new chapter. And God bless you as you do that. Uh, for me, God has done a new thing, and I am so privileged to have been part of that by being able to be among you. It was a new thing to be with the people of Palm. I mean, I grew up in Lebanon County and had heard of Palm Lutheran Church. I mean, and, and um, you know, I'll just name Sandy. I've known Sandy a long time, and she and I actually went to a um, synod assembly. A synod, we called them conventions then, I think. I don't remember anyway. It was a long time ago. Oh, sorry, Sandy. I'm just dating myself, not you. Um, but um, so God is doing a new thing here with you and I am privileged to have been here as you transition to that new thing and also privileged to have been and I'll name it um, you know and lo these many years um, all the pictures on the wall out there are of men um, my separate little prayer is that one day you have will have a picture of a woman pastor out there as well so um, I know that um, I was one of two women who um, have recently been privileged to be among you and um, I thank God for being part of that new thing. It wasn't so bad, was it? Um, well, maybe it was, but um, I am privileged to be part of that. And again, as you move into the future, into a new chapter in the life of Palm, may you always, always, always be centered on the God who loves us extravagantly. Amen.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We 